<clears throat> All right. I want to take this opportunity on my weekly run to the post office, making myself another video, a couple issues I want to discuss, you know. Uh, number one, I was talking to my buddy Seth last night. He was thinking, what should we call this video? I said, how about calling it Save Me White Jesus? Just save me, white Jesus. White Jesus, I just don't know what to do. White Jesus, please, 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 please. Help me out, Jesus. White Jesus, you do it for me, please. And, you know, I decided to amend the title to my man, the Ice Man. I said, look, white Jesus, save me, white Jesus. And if you can't save me, at least put $10 on my light bill. At least just tell me what the number is gonna be this week so I might could hit it, might could get to the bingo and get myself them shoes. Ooh, white Jesus need you so much. So call it Save Me White Jesus because people were talking about the Trayvon Martin thing and George Zimmerman thing and you know, my buddy Eddie on Facebook, he posted this thing, he posted a comment about how we should, uh, we should, uh, hoping you can hear me here because like I said, I'm on, parked on top of the overpass and there's a lot of traffic below me but my buddy Eddie was like um, <clears throat> we should have an economic boycott against select businesses that are headquartered in Florida for a week just to show them what your value actually is I said a week I commented a week why not a year you know I mean if you really want to show them what what your dollars mean to their business model what it means to their economic bottom line why would you tolerate just a one week seven day boycott why not a full year 365 days you know then there was a comment to one of his one of his friends who had commented below me said no we shouldn't do that because all that would do it was it would penalize the white businesses who who had nothing to do with this entire incident what we need to do is we need to unify get together and pray and then wait on the lord i'm like wait on the lord I said, man, this woman been brainwashed. You people go to church every Sunday waiting on the Lord to do what? I mean, I don't understand. What are you waiting on him to do that you can't do for yourself? I mean, seriously, you people, I mean, you, when you take the tenets of Marcus Garvey, Adam Clayton Powell Jr., you know, Malcolm X with black naturalism, you people up in church waiting. I mean, you see, and, and, and honestly, you don't want to sound misogynistic, but this is a woman's sentiment because only women believe this. Only, women could, only a woman could believe that. I'm not gonna do what I can do with my own two hands and my own incentive, my own intuition, my own ambition, my own desire to make things better for myself. I'm gonna wait on some person, some deity, some being that I've never seen and I'm not quite sure actually exists to do it all for me. That doesn't even make sense. And you know, I wanna clarify that that comment, some may take it as misogynism, you know, it sounds like you're hating on women because only they're going to believe in the power of faith. Well, you know, you're not testing your faith, you're not challenging your faith, so basically, to me, it sounds like magic. What is faith if you're not willing to test it? You can't put the tenants out there and make them work for you. I have to sit over here and wait for it to happen. Why don't you go out there and make it happen? And when it does happen, then you can believe in what you were told. Because it makes me think that you're not being instructed properly when you go into these churches and you're giving these preachers your money. He's passing the plate one, two, three, or four, five times, but he's not giving you anything. There's nothing absolute that you can take with you when you leave that company, when you leave that congregation. He's just telling you to wait. Trust in the Lord and have faith. Why? Why can't you why can't you work with the Lord and have faith that your works will come out? On, on the brighter side of darkness, you know? So, Eddie had responded. He said, man, I agree with you 100%. And he had told this other person that, you know, that it's not a bad idea to pray, but you got to have some real concrete measures, you know? And then it, 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 it also reminds me of another discussion I had. So, just so people know that, the Save Me White Jesus is not a black people phenomenon, it's a white people phenomenon also. That, you know, on Facebook there's a forum for those of us that grew up upstate in, in the Albany area, in the 518 area code, and then there was a discussion going on, and this is about maybe 
the day of 4th of July or the day before 4th of July and the person was talking about uh, how the reason why the country is being ruined because everyone is on welfare and everything everybody's on public assistance and I thought that was a crock and then normally what happens is when these people make these arguments they're making them from a point of ignorance because they don't really know what they're talking about but they feel comfortable insulting other people who have less than them and what you really if you really examine the issue what they're saying is that they are envious of the people who are in the same economic class as they are but have more than they do so it's always how did they get that car and you know I don't want to get too far off it but I remember <clears throat> in Albany I had a friend her name was Marla her last name was Cade I'm putting her out there because Marla you know she was a, she was a cool person Marla Cade now Marla Cade her parents went to the same church that I went to, I visited, didn't really go to the church because I wasn't really into that church thing, but it was a missionary Baptist church and it was on Quail Street. And Marla Cade, her parents went to that church and me and Marla were cool. But Marla's father had died. But Mar and Marla's, Marla's, mother, Marla's mother did not drive. So when her father had died, Marla was given a Cadillac, which was her father's Cadillac. Now, at this point in time, I think Marla worked down on Broadway, which was which was an agency. I think it was the Department of Taxation and Finance, which they had, which which they were using in the converted bowling alley. So it used to be a bowling alley in the '60s, '70s, and '80s, and then it was vacant for some time. And then the state took up a lease in that building and then put the tax processing department in there. But anyway, Marla was working in there in that department and she would show up to work in her father's Cadillac and then you know people would say she would tell me that people would say the most they would say the most callous things to her but they weren't really callous they were just sort of weirdly you know you know you you, you want you want uh, preferential let's call them they were preferential comments that they would say to her how did you get that car now she didn't tell them and I advised her not to tell them because it was not their business how you got that car but I know how she got that car, all right? Her father had died and, you know, she was left with a brand new Cadillac. That's how she got the car. But they would talk to her like, you know, how did you get a car like that? Like she wasn't supposed to have that car. Like she was supposed to show up in one of them, you know, the first generation Honda Civics, you know, the thing that looked like a balled up orange. So a lot of times when you're talking to other poor people or you're talking to poor people and poor people are saying these comments what they are is they're envious that a person has something better than they have and they were not they're not too convinced how they got that thing how did you obtain something better than what i have when society says that you're supposed to be in a lower economic or social class than i am so that's the white people using the save me white jesus too because they're in the same church they just internalize the information differently. See, the black people have internalized the information to, I'm not going to do anything but sit here and pray. The white people have internalized that into, I deserve special treatment and I'm not going to do anything and you should just give it to me just because. But they're all in the same economic class with the same social standing. But back to my thing about the black people in the Save Me White Jesus, you don't really find a lot of men believe that. You definitely find a lot of women believe that. It's like women, and, 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 and actually, it's the intellectual status of of the black political realm right now. People are trying to make friends. All right, my boy, um, my man Shadi, you know, from New Orleans, told me his ex-wife called him the other day. She was crying. Why don't they like us? Why? <laughs> like. See, your woman brainwashed, man. That woman brainwashed. Why does it matter if they don't like you? Why do you need them to like you? Why are you trying to make friends? Why is the soul your... See, see this, this is a woman thing. This is a female thing. Because if there are four guys over here and one guy says, I don't like that guy over there, well, you're free not to like that guy. And if I go over to say, that dude said he don't like you. You know what a, what a normal man would say? If, if, if there were four of us here, let's say there was Shadi, myself, my man uh, 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 Phil, my man Akil, and my man Seth, and then across the street we have we have we would have a, a Chevis. Chevis. Chevis would be across the street, and then someone goes. Uh, Phil goes over to Chevis and he says, 
you know, Seth doesn't like you. All right? See, the way women think is, I have to get him to like me. Why doesn't he like me? It would just be so grand if he liked me. That's the way women think. You may disagree, but based on my experience, that's how women think. A man would be like, so what? Fuck that motherfucker. Fuck that motherfucker with a rusty bag, with a rusty, dusty bag of carrots. You know, because it just wouldn't be a major concern that that guy doesn't like me if I don't need him for anything. And the only reason you don't see black people do that is because you need them. This is why they don't. This is why they they they, they develop the psychosis about themselves where they can't tell white people the truth because they need you for something. They need you to give them a job. They need you to give them a bank loan. They need you to give them a car loan. They need you to sell them a car at a good price. They need you to deliver their food. But if you were to actually examine what's really going on, you should pay heed to the way that they really think because it's not about you personally. They don't like you personally. There are objective things in a society that they just can't agree with. Which brings me back to what the comment that Shadi's wife made that why don't they like us? This is not really your concern. It's not your issue. It's not that what can you do as black people to get white people to like you? This is not your concern. This is about them. This has always been about them. What can they do to make themselves live in this world harmoniously? This is what this is about, right? There are seven billion people on the planet. Less than 10% of them are white people. And in this country, if this country consisted of all white people, including Canada, that is still one half of 1%. You know? That's about 400 million people, right? So 400 million people would be, you know, that'd be a half. I gotta do the math on that. Worked out better in my head. There was another thing I wanted to talk about, but I'll save that for later after I come out of the post office. Got enough time, it's only 10.05 right now. You know, I'm doing this Tuesday morning. But it was about save me, save me white Jesus. And you know, so the comment was, we need to sit, we need to get together and pray. Now, I don't even know what church that woman goes to, but she's getting robbed. She's getting fleeced. She's getting fleeced. If the, if the, if the apex of your faith is do nothing, that's not faith. That's magic. Magic. I mean, you know, you give me, why don't you give me 10% of your income every week and I'll do it. I'll do some magic tricks for you. You know, you sit there and do nothing and you enjoy my, 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 my verbosity my colloquial use of the modern day language. Maybe I'll pull an orange out of my ear or a bunny out of a hat, you know? That's what you're doing, right? You're paying me to give you, to give you peace, but I'm not giving you peace. I'm feeding you in effectiveness. I'm telling you to do nothing with your life, especially when things are in your control. Don't do that. That would make them mad. Why? So clearly your white Jesus has got white apostles and he's got white di deities, you know? And so for the white people that believe in that save me white Jesus, you know, and they, they, they use that to rationalize why everybody else doesn't deserve what they have, <clears throat> you know? How did Marla get that car? How did she get a car like that? Is she doing something criminal? Is she doing something suspect? Now Marla has to put her whole life on display for your approval, but who are you? If the fact that Marla got, has a Cadillac and you don't, does that mean that Marla's managing her money better? No, I couldn't mean that. Couldn't mean that Marla's got a special skill that she can charge people for. Maybe she's a, maybe she's a baker. You know, maybe she's a mason. All right. Maybe she's a ghostwriter for for Celine Dion. She couldn't do that. She would have to obtain that car by the criminal element. That's that's what we assume. Cause that's what that person in that form assumed, you know? I drive past the Department of Public Services and they got all of these fancy cars in there. How did they get those cars? Well, I mean, I don't even know how to explain that. You drove past the parking lot and you saw a bunch of cars in the parking lot and you assumed that everybody who was applying for public assistance owned one of those cars. Not one of them could have been an employee for that agency. Not one of them could have worked at another, another affiliated business in that in that office complex 
and, and also the stipulation that just because you have the car means that you got it at a premium. Look, man, I got a Cadillac. But, you know, well, first of all, Cadillac is not the premium that it was 20, 30, 40 years ago. You know, in 1961, you told somebody you had a Cadillac sedan in the veil, and they, oh, Mr. La Did Da, Mr. Hud Did Tati, right? You tell them you got a Cadillac now, it's like, you know, it's not even, it's not the premium brand. It's one of the mid-mark brands now, right? But also keep in mind that if the car isn't new, the age precedes the make, you know? If the car is 20 years old, yeah, you got a Cadillac, but it's 20 years old. So it's a 20-year-old car, you know? And some dudes need a reality check, because when I lived in Miami, there was this fruity dude, and you know, and I'm not saying he was gay, I'm just saying his, but his mannerisms, you know, were, were ultra bourgeois. You know, he had went to Syracuse University and he had studied mechanical engineering, so he thought he, he was an engineer. You're not an engineer, you just studied engineering. You're an engineer when you actually can build something or design something. But he had a BMW, 3 Series. So what? But that was, that was I got a Beamer. You know, my Beamer, I'm going down to the nightclub, I'm going to... And he, and he and he would he would he would relish of having this BMW. Had a keychain with the you know with the BMW logo on it. You know? He had a BMW 318, which means he had a 1.84 cylinder, which was the cheapest model they made. And this was in 2005. But the model year for his car was 1987. You see? This guy having the BMW was more important than knowing the, the real than the reality of the situation where this guy had an old ass raggedy piece of shit. Right? He got a 1987 BMW 318 with no carpet, no air conditioning in Miami, Florida. Come on, man. Right? I mean, unless the woman you're talking to was illiterate and just came here 20 minutes ago, that's not impressing anybody. I got a beamer. My beamer. You see my beamer. I gotta get my beamer detailed. And the reason he, when he told me the reason he have a carpet, he, he, the reason when he told me the reason he didn't have a carpet is because somebody threw up on it. Oh yeah, when my buddies threw up on my carpet and then we had to cut it out. And no air conditioning in Florida. Come on, man. So, you know, when 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 people talk about save me white Jesus, and you know, you hear a lot of that. And no offense to some of my Facebook buddies, but. I mean, I, I, I don't. I try not to get into altercations on you on your page, so I just read your comments and just let them slide. But all that sit down and pray, all of that. That sounds silly, man. Right? I mean, if we're gonna do something silly, you might as well put some pizzazz to it. Why don't we put on some bright red underwear and a cape, go outside and pretend we're Superman? As long as you don't jump from a from a from a distance of a, from a height of greater than 40 feet, you'll be all right. I mean, you know, might get a reality show out of it. Maybe a sitcom. Maybe an episode of That Bitch Crazy. You know? But I'm going to run in here. And I wanted to talk about something else. But I really wanted to get this. I'm going to make this part one because I probably have some more ideas when I run in here to pick up my packages. So we're going to call it Save Me White Jesus. And, or at least put $5 on my light bill. Part one. And then I'll do some more later on. And, uh, you know, normally these things should be scripted out, but you, know, you, you try to make them off the cover. At least I try to shave. I didn't shave my head. I wanted to shave my face so I wouldn't look real wild, but I'll get back with you guys in a minute.